It's been quite a long time since we've gotten a proper new skateboarding game. The last one in even remotely recent memory was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 in 2015, and I think we all know how that one turned out. Before that, it was Skate 3 in 2010, so the genre has been silent for quite some time. That was, of course, until last year in 2019 when we got a couple of early access titles that were both planning to be spiritual successors to EA's abandoned skate series. Now, skating video games have had a long and storied history, and it would be dishonest of me to say that they don't have a very special place in my heart. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater was the reason I begged my dad to get me a PlayStation, and was a huge driving force in what really pushed my obsession with gaming, music, and skating. Remembering back to when I was young, I was always dying to hear information about the next entry in the Tony Hawk series, and my dad, bless his heart, would take me to Best Buy to get each one on launch day. By the time the 8th game in the series, Tony Hawk's Project 8, came around, the series had started to grow a bit stale. Don't get me wrong, Project 8 was still a really fun game and I spent tons of hours with it, but it lacked a lot of the personality and magic that made the older installments so good. EA saw this stagnation and jumped on the opportunity, calling upon their subsidiary Black Box to make a new skateboarding game, one that challenged the very fundamental gameplay that all others had before it. EA released Skate in 2007 to much critical acclaim. Their more realistic approach had made the stale skateboarding genre finally feel fresh again, and was something fans had been craving for a long time. The instant popularity of Skate and its new Flicket control system meant that EA would be willing to greenlight more entries in the series, and so Skate eventually got a spin-off and two sequels. With Skate 3 releasing in 2010, the series seemed to be unstoppable, and it was only a matter of time before Skate 4 would be announced and subsequently released. But just as quick as it had arrived, EA never spoke on it again. Fast forward 10 years later, and EA was still showing no signs of releasing a new entry from their beloved franchise. They say history repeats itself, and just as before, the skateboarding video game genre once again had a large gap and a big opportunity in the market. Enter both Session and Skater XL, two games that aim to fill the Skate 4 shaped hole in everybody's heart. After almost a decade since the last Skate game, and EA's silence on the series growing deafeningly louder every year, it was nice to finally have someone attempting to give those fans what they were craving. And that's why it was so shocking when just a couple of months ago, at EA's State of Play conference, they threw in an announcement for a new Skate game at the very end. After a whole decade of completely neglecting their fans and refusing to make Skate 4, they wanted to make us think that they care, when in reality, this was just a move to cash in on the new hype surrounding skating games, while also undermining the hard work that Creature and Easy Day Studios had put into Session and Skater XL, respectively. I want to be crystal clear. I have no ill will towards Darren and Cuz and the rest of the team formerly of Black Box, and I will still buy the next skate game to support these awesome people. No. I'm just really pissed off at EA for trying to swindle fans after years and years of brushing us and the developers aside. But enough about that. Thankfully, we have a very diverse selection of skateboarding games coming out in the near future, one of those even being a remake of the first two Tony Hawk games. Out of all these games, it's Skater XL that I want to talk about today. Now, I really haven't gotten to spend much time with Session, so it would be disingenuous for me to talk about it, but I have played a ton of Skater XL, and it definitely does a great job at being a spiritual successor to Skate, while also having its own identity. The first thing you'll realize when you see this game is just how much this game looks and feels like Skate. The game takes a hyper-realistic approach, and tricks require a lot of planning and precision, Easy Day Studios built off of the Flicket system from the Skate series and expanded on the way it handles. Instead of performing flip tricks with the right analog stick alone, each foot is now controlled individually, left foot to the left stick, right foot to the right stick. This means that turning and spins had to be remapped and are now controlled by the two triggers. It takes a while to adjust to these new controls, but after taking some time to familiarize yourself, it starts to feel like a more robust version of Skate's Flicket system. This new system isn't without fault though, trying to high pop and do a double kickflip or heel flip is almost impossible as you will undoubtedly end up rocketing or sending it into a full forward flip. 
Varial and inward flips are extremely touchy, and there's only a small sliver of the analog stick where you'll get it right. Instead, most of the time when I try to do, say, a varial kickflip, it overspins and does a tray flip every single time. Manuals also suffer from some really small hitboxes, and trying to land in a manual proves to be much more of a challenge than it really should be. Skater XL has a lot going for it though, and since it's been on Steam Early Access for a good while now, there's a huge and dedicated modding community attached to it. The game just saw its full 1.0 release on the 28th of July, which adds a lot more character customization as well as three new official maps, Downtown LA, Easy Day High School, and the Big Air Ramp, plus a handful of community-made maps. Downtown LA is easily the most atmospheric map, with its large street plazas, real skate spots, and even the entrance to the Staples Center, which I was stunned to see it's officially licensed in the game. After having the LA Courthouse and California Skate Park as the only official maps from the early access for so long, it was so nice to finally have something much, much larger to skate, one where I'm not tricking the same few obstacles over and over again. The other map, Easy Day High School, is not as big, but it is still wholly satisfying to skate and is probably my favorite of the two. The third map is a huge mega ramp complex with the big air gap and a half pipe slash bowl type setup at the start. This map is a little weird though as the game's vert controls and physics feel like they still need a lot of tweaking before this map really feels like it's worth playing. I often found myself airing out of the quarter pipes or just awkwardly floating through the air on the big air at the end due to some weird gravity physics on vert skating. Transition skating is a little bit better, but can still feel a little awkward. These ramp physics still need a lot of work done before it can even come close to skates level, which is why I tend to stick to the other maps. Along with the three new locations, all of the official maps, new and old, have introduced a set of objectives for them called challenges. Unfortunately, these ended up feeling a lot more like tutorials on tricks or spots than they did actual challenges. It's a nice change, but if you're looking for a more robust career or story like those found in Skate and Tony Hawk, you will be deeply disappointed. In fact, I would have a very hard time recommending this game to anyone looking for that kind of content. This is just not a game that is structured with any kind of progression or leveling. There are no skills, stats, or character development. What you get right out of the gate is everything that the game offers. For being called a full version release, there's not really much here. It honestly still feels very much like a tech demo, albeit a very robust and large tech demo, but still a tech demo nonetheless. If it weren't for the absolutely massive modding community on PC, I would have a hard time recommending this to anyone other than the diehard skate fans who just want a virtual sandbox to create lines. Casual players might want to pass up on this for the time being, at least until a more comprehensive version comes to fruition, with progression, a career, and more engaging challenges. For more hardcore skating fans though, the game has an excellent replay system, similar to the filmer pack in the Skate series. You can get some really incredible shots, and people have already shown the endless possibilities with this by creating their own full video parts. This is another reason why I have no problem recommending this to the dedicated skateboarding crowd, and far less towards the casuals. With the complex controls and procedurally animated tricks, no two kickflips look the same and it makes for some very unique gameplay and video clips. The downfall though is that this animation technique and control scheme come with their own problems. With the procedurally animated tricks, you end up with some really funky animations that sometimes break the immersion. The bales could use some work too as they look very weightless as you hit a rail and fly 30 yards away. This isn't that big of a deal as the tricks are the main focus, but it does come across as unfinished after having Skate 3's awesome Hall of Meat Bales etched into our memory over the past decade. It may sound like I'm complaining a lot, but I do really enjoy this game. The refined and unique Flick It style system really feels great, and the trick animations are excellent even though they have their small hiccups. I have been having a great deal of fun just cruising around the spots and coming up with lines, which was always what I spent most of my time doing in the Skate series anyway. With every trick never looking the same, I'm sure we'll see some incredible and original videos as the game continues to grow. 
Skater XL is an excellent skating sim, but suffers from feeling like it's still in early access with a need for both refinement and more to do. But what you do get with Skater XL is one of, if not the best control systems in a skateboarding game. If you want to simulate the grueling challenge of mastering that perfect line or just love to get lost in your thoughts casually skating around town, this is the perfect game for you. Controls and physics for vert skating still don't quite feel right, and it's missing a real progression or career system, but the immaculate street skating controls and environments are a skater's paradise. It's hard to recommend this game on consoles because of their lack of user-generated maps, but on the PC version it offers a better selection for those looking for an authentic skateboarding experience. While it struggles with content and depth, Skater XL delivers an incredible foundation for what is sure to be the perfect cure for that skating itch on a rainy day, and for everyone else, a pleasant tech demo to hold you over until the release of EA's Skate 4. Now I want to hear from you. Have you given Skater XL a try, or are you holding out for Skate 4 later on? Let me know in the comments below and make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you want to get notified on my next upload, make sure to subscribe and then hit that bell icon. With that, I have been the Names Jer. Thanks for watching. See you later!